Okay, so this time we're going to look at Poisson processes, which is a good example of the Poisson distribution. So here's my question. The number of people arrive in at a coffee shop is a Poisson process, the rate of 2 per 10 minutes. What is the probability between 10, uh, sorry, 9 and 10 a.m.? No customers arrived. So let's start off. Let's think about, first of all, what the process is. So we'll start off by, we'll let y be the number of customers between 9 and 10. So I've defined my random variable y and what we're going to have is set equation. So y in this case is going to have a distribution. So if we've got a press on process it's going to be a press on distribution and to get the rate, what we need to do is think about how many minutes we've got. So between 9 and 10, we've got 60 minutes. So we've got 2 per 10, so altogether that must be 12. So basically, I worked out, I've got 2 divided by 10, gives me pi per minute, and then times by 60, so that should equal 12. Just in case I can't do mental arithmetic, I've got 2 divided by 10 times by 60, because we've got 60 minutes, it's 12. Good. Okay, so that's what we've got. Now the question asks, no customers, so we want the probability that y equals zero. Okay, so we've got zero between that. So easy enough, we go to MATLAB, we've got a plus, see what's what we've got. Right. We want probability density function. Why? Because if we go to my cheat sheet. So we've got events per unit time. No problem, let me just make that a bit smaller. So I said we've got events in time in this case, so that's why I'm told it's press on. So we've got a lambda t, so we've got our rate per unit time times by t. So we've done all that. Here's my probability mass function. So I can do this calculation by hand, or instead I can use press PDF. So press PDF. I've got zero, I've got a rate of 12. And that gives you a really small number, six times 10. If I just um, long, yeah, it didn't really help. I just wanted to have anything, but that's all right. So there's my command. Like that. So again, if you type something in, make a mistake, you don't get the exact answer. If you show me you're working like this, then hopefully the marks will give you some marks for at least showing understanding. And what does that equal? That equals I'll do that one. That's a bit better. Excellent. So I mean, that sort of makes sense if you think about it. You know that you get expect 12 people in an hour, so the chance you get absolutely zero is going to be a small probability. So it passes the stupidity test. What's the probability that more than five customers arrive between 9 and 9.30? So first of all, again, if we let y be the number of customers between this time, this time y is going to be press on we now have only got half an hour, so that's going to be six. No problem. And what do we want? We want the probability that more than five. So y is greater than five. Which is the probability that y is greater than or equal to five. which equals 1 minus the probability that y is less than or equal to 4. OK, so logic. More than 5, so that's going to be 6, 7, 8, 9, all the way up to infinity. So that's more than 5. Oh, this is wrong. That should be 6. Because the probability of y is greater than or equal to 6. 
So that must be one minus the power of a to the y is less than five. That's better. So I changed first of all my greater than into the greater than or equal. Then I converted that into the CDF, the one minus. Being very careful because again the Poisson is a discrete bound of variable, discrete greater than and greater than or equal are not the same things. So we have to take that into account. So now I've got that, I can actually enter that into MATLAB. So 1 minus PRAS. I'm doing less than or equal, so it's CDF. So we've got 5, 6. So that's the answer. Actually, I might make that back to format short. easy enough. Copy. In fact, let me get the kernel as well because I told you that's a good idea. So that equals that equals that. All done. Okay. So what is the probability that two or less customers arrive between 10 and 10.30? Now, the interesting thing with the Poisson, we may have discussed this already in lectures, don't know I'm recording this before the lectures are done, but basically it's still half an hour of time. And the Poisson doesn't care when I start counting. So here I start counting at 9, here I start counting at 10. But this is about half an hour of time. This is about half an hour of time. All that matters is it's a half an hour of time, not the fact that it's 9 o'clock. 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock. So if we go insert equation, it's the probability. So first of all, we've got y is sin PO. Again, okay, half an hour of time, that's 6. How do I get that 6? Because I said it's 2 per 10 minutes. So 2 per 10. So I get that many per minute. So 2 per 10 times by about 30 minutes, which is 6. That's why I got six. No problem. So what do I want? I want the probability of the two or less. I want the probability that y is less than or equal to two. It's already in the form of a CDF, so I can do that easy enough. So I want plus CDF. I want two, six is my rate. So there's the answer. That one. And then the answer is that. Done. If four people Okay, so question four. Four people arrive in the first hour. What is the probability that no one arrives between 10 and 11 a.m.? Okay, well, for this we can use what we call the membranous property. So the idea of the membranous property of the Poisson distribution is if I've got non-overlapping time periods, so in this case we're talking about 9 and 10 and 10 and 11. Don't worry that they have the 10, we're just, these are non-overlapping time periods as far as we're concerned. What it basically says is the probability of what happens between 9 and 10, because the Poisson process is memoryless, doesn't affect the probability of writing between 10 and 11. So what we're basically saying is this information here really doesn't change anything. Basically, you can still think about this as a simple Poisson distribution. All I care about is one hour's worth of time. So let's write that down. So, uh, we can say the probability that, well, uh, what we'll do is we'll let x be the people that arrive between 9 and 10, and y be the people that arrive between 10 and 11. So the probability that y equals 0, given x equals 4, Okay, equals the probability that y equals zero. I better just put down what I've got there. Where y is the number of people who arrive between 
between 10 and 11. And x is the number of people who arrive between 9 and 10 using the fact of the nebulous property of the Poisson process and the fact that my talk 10 and 10 to 11 are non overlapping. So I'm just justifying that so I can show understanding. If I show understanding, I can get the marks. So probability that y equals 0. Well, I've got that y is a press on. We've got one hour, we know for an hour it's 12. So the probability that y equals 0, well, it's the press probability density function. We want 0, 12. So that's one number again. We've already calculated it. So equals. That equals that. Excellent. That's it. See you next time.